All right, so I'm going to summarize uh, what you have to know for Thursday's quiz uh, when it comes to optics. All right, so let's start with these three equations. These are the three equations you're going to want to know, and I'm going to give you the College Board equation sheet on the quiz, so you don't have to you know, necessarily memorize them. Uh, this first equation is referred to as the wave equation. So the velocity of a wave equals wavelength times frequency. You're given the wavelength, you're given the frequency, you multiply them together, it comes out uh, as the velocity of the wave. Now, when a wave travels from one medium into another medium, uh, the velocity is going to change. The thing to know is that the, the thing that determines the speed of a wave is what medium it travels in. It's not the wavelength, it's not the frequency. That's a common misconception because you look at the equation for velocity of a wave and you go, oh, it's, it's equal to wavelength multiplied by frequency. So you think that the velocity depends upon the wavelength and the frequency when in fact it does not. Uh, the only thing that the velocity of a wave depends upon is the medium that the wave is in. Okay, so let's look at a situation where you have like, let's have like this vertical boundary here and say on this side we have air and on this side we have water. Okay, so let's look at a wave coming in like this and it hits this boundary and then goes through to the other side. Um, a, a light travels faster in air than it does in water. We're going to talk about this in a second. Uh, so, so the speed of a light wave is faster in air than it is in water. So what's the reason for this? Well, what happens is when the, when the wave enters the water, the wavelength gets shorter, right? The wavelength decreases. So here in the air, the wavelength was that big. Here in the water, the wavelength is, is smaller, okay? What remains constant for a given wave as you go from one medium to the next? The frequency. And, if you, and don't memorize that. If you think about it, if you have a frequency of 100 hertz on this side of the barrier, um, in the air, you must have a frequency of 100 hertz on the other side. Because what does 100 hertz mean? In this case, it would mean 100 waves per second. If you have 100 waves per second striking this boundary, there has to be 100 waves per second on the other side of the boundary. Okay? Um, so frequency remains constant. If the wavelength decreases, then the velocity decreases. If the wavelength increases, then the velocity increases. All right, this second equation, N is what we call index. It's called the index of refraction. Okay, and then this equation is the basic definition for index of refraction. N equals C over V. So what is C? Speed of light, Speed of light where? In a vacuum. C is the speed of light in a vacuum which is 3.0 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Now, V is the speed of light in whatever medium you're focusing on, okay? So, and that's going to be in units of meter per second. So what's going to be the unit for the index of refraction? We have the situation where C is measured in meters per second and V is measured in meters per second. So what happens to the meter per second? It cancels, so what's the unit for index of refraction? Nothing. There is no unit. There is no unit for the index of refraction. Okay, one thing to know about the index of refraction is it can never, ever, ever be less than zero. N can never, I'm sorry, not zero, 1.0. N can never, ever, 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 this cannot happen. You can't have N smaller than 1.0 because why? Because the speed of light is the it's the uh, the speed of light in a vacuum is the speed limit of the universe. V will never be larger than C, right? The speed of light in a given medium can never be faster than it is in the in a uh, in a vacuum. Does that make sense? So what does an increasing V mean? If n increases, what is that telling us about the velocity in the medium? Decreasing. That means that the speed is what. So N equals C over V, so rearrange that. V equals C over N. If your N is increasing, what happens to the speed? It's decreasing. A larger index of refraction means that the velocity of the wave is going down. 
All right, lastly, this is getting messy. I'm just going to clean this up, go to a new screen. Okay, this last equation, n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2. So this is referred to as Snell's law. Okay, and Snell's law is used for refraction. So let's look at a situation where we have a boundary between two mediums. So let's say it's air and water again. So we have air and water. Now what I'm drawing in right here, what's this called? That's called the normal line. Normal just means perpendicular to. And in, in physics, when you're doing optics, you're always measuring angles off the normal line. Okay, so let's look at a light ray. A light ray comes into this boundary. Oops, let me draw that better. A light ray comes into this boundary between air and water. Now there's a name for that ray that comes in. What do we call that ray? That's called the incident ray. Incident ray. All right. Uh, this angle right here is referred to as the angle of incidence. This is referred to as angle of incidence. All right, now, a couple things happen when you have this ray that strikes the boundary between air and water. Some of this incident ray is going to be reflected, and reflection is super easy. So, for example, let's just say that this theta here is 30. Now, what, what do we call this angle on this side? That's called the angle of reflection, and it's real easy because the angle of incidence is always equal to the angle of reflection, okay? Unless, of course, and you should be aware of this, unless, of course, the surface is bumpy. If the surface is bumpy, there's no telling where the reflected ray is going to go. The reflected ray could be like boing, it could be totally random, okay? But specular reflection is when the surface is totally smooth and you get nice reflection like that. So this is called the reflected ray. Okay, now, what's the other thing that happens when a ray goes from one medium to the next? Some of this incident ray is going to go into the new medium, and what do we call that? That's called refraction, and refraction is the bending of a, of a wave path as it goes from one medium to the next. Okay, so this is, in this case, it's going to bend. We would describe this as being towards the normal. Now, air, so do you guys see why that's towards the normal? It got closer, you know, if, if the ray would have gone straight, if the ray, if the incident ray would have gone straight, it would have gone like that. So the refracted ray got closer to the normal line. We call this the refracted ray. And then this angle in here, that's called the angle of refraction. Okay, index of refraction for air. Air is 1.00. Water is 1.33. Guys, I rarely say to memorize things, but this is a case where you do want to have this memorized. The thing to memorize, when a ray travels from smaller index, such as air, smaller index into higher index, the refracted ray is always going to bend towards the normal line, just like that. Now, what happens if you have a ray that goes the other way? Okay, so let's look at a light ray that comes up from water, which is entirely possible. Okay, this ray hits the surface. Here's the normal line, like that. Now, what's going to happen when this incident ray hits the surface? Some of it's going to reflect, okay, and then some of it's going to refract. Which way will the refraction be if you're going from water, which is higher index, into air, which is lower index? It goes, it goes away from the normal. It goes away from the normal line, like that. Okay? Um, what am I forgetting to say? Oh, another way to say this, you should be aware of this. So smaller index to larger index, another way to say that is less dense to more dense. A lower index of refraction is synonymous with less dense. A higher index of refraction is synonymous with uh, more dense. Okay, so I want to end with. Sorry, I got to open this. 
I forgot to open this. All right, so here's a situation. So we're gonna, we're gonna take a look at this and then I'm gonna show you some demos on the board. So why don't I give you guys like five minutes. So I want you to sketch. You're gonna sketch the path of the incident ray. Oh, let me show you the incident ray. So here's the normal line. So we have an incident ray that strikes this boundary. We have air, glass, and then the glass is sitting on top of water. Just how is that possible? I don't know. It's the glass is suspended on top of the water. Okay, so we have three mediums, air, glass, water. I want you to sketch the path that this incident ray will follow uh, as it goes you know, through the glass down to the water uh, and then show, show what happens at each boundary. Okay, so here's the solution. Here's what you do. So we have this incident ray coming in, striking this boundary. So we just want a general sketch of what happens as it goes through the, the glass block and then reaches the water. All right, so starting right here, incident ray comes in, what happens? Some of it reflects, some of it refracts. Which way is the refraction going to be? Closer to the normal or away from the normal? Closer. It's going to come closer to the normal. Bam, put arrows on these. You put arrows on these rays. Now, what's going to happen here? Let's draw in our normal line, dot, 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 dot. Show the normal. Oops, let's do a better normal. Get right on that point. So do, 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 right there. Good enough. What's going to happen at this boundary? Some of it's going to reflect. So just, you know, equal angle. So some of it reflects, comes back up again. And then some of it's going to refract into the water. Which way is the refraction going to be? It's going to be away. Now, I got a question for you. Are, will this ray and this ray be parallel? It will not. Um, it would have been, if this would have been air right here, if this would have been air, which is 1.00, then this ray and this ray would have been perfectly parallel to each other. Um, but as it was, um, let's see what's going to happen. Let me clean this up. So this is 1.33. So it's going to bend. Uh, uh, they're not going to be parallel. Hold on, my brain's not working here. So it's not going to bend back as far. Uh, the thing to realize, if the difference, so here we have 1.5 and 1.3, uh, whereas at the first boundary up here, it's 1 and 1.5. The bigger the difference in the two index of refractions, the bigger the difference, the more it's going to refract. So this would actually be, this ray would actually bend not quite as far away, right? So it's kind of shooting off more like that way, whereas this ray here was more like lining up like that. You know what I'm saying? Because the difference in the index of refractions was not as much. Okay, so this ray refracts away from the normal like that. This guy comes up like this. Now check it. What's going to happen right here? Some of it's going to reflect. Some of it's going to refract. Will these guys be parallel? Yes. Yes, because they're, they're, they both did the exact same thing. right? So this, this guy reflects off. This guy goes through glass. Uh, when this guy comes back, he's going to be perfectly in line with that guy. OK? Uh, now. Next question. For the show and light ray, rank the following from largest to smallest, one being largest. So air, glass, water. Where is the speed going to be the greatest? So you're using this equation. You're using n equals c over v. So if you rearrange that for v, v equals c over n. So what are we looking for? We're looking for the index of refraction that is smallest, because the smallest index means the largest velocity. So which one has the smallest? Air. So it's, it goes one and followed by water, two, three. In glass, it's, uh, air, uh, the light wave's traveling the slowest. Now frequency was a trick question, because what do you know about the frequency of a wave as it goes from one medium to the next? It stays the same. So this is going to be one, one, one. They're all tied for fastest, because it's the same. And then lastly, wavelength. So now we use velocity equals wavelength times frequency. Frequency is staying constant here. So how do we figure out what's happening to the wavelength of the light rays? 
we can figure it out by looking at what happened to the velocity. So if the velocity went down, the wavelength went down. If velocity goes up, then wavelength goes up. So the longest wavelength is going to be in air. The shortest wavelength is in glass. The medium wavelength is in water.